Hello, everybody. I'm Brad Means. As we continue to try to recover from the devastation of Hurricane Helene, I wanted to let folks know what the state of Georgia is doing to get us through these tough times. And Georgia Governor Brian Kemp has been kind enough to spend some time talking to us about what's going on at the state level. Governor Kemp, I can't thank you enough for taking time out of what is certainly a very busy schedule these days to be with us. My first question is just how are you and your family doing after this storm? Well, we're, we're doing fine. Uh, you know, this is a devastating storm, Brad, as you know, Marty and two of the girls and I just got back from going down to Valdosta to uh, we took a helicopter tour of the uh, da uh, damage in several of those counties down there, did a press conference just to make sure they knew the resources that we were sending down there. We had the Colquitt EMC folks there, Georgia Power was there. But literally, uh, we have over 30 counties that are just as devastated as Valdosta, uh, just like uh, the CSRA is as well uh, in Augusta, Richmond County. We know about just a tragic fatalities in McDuffie County with the 27 year old mother and one year old twin boys that perished because of this storm. And, you know, our hearts are breaking a lot of, like a lot of other people, but we literally have tens of thousands of people responding to this storm right now. Uh, but it is very widespread. It is a statewide event. We're dealing with flooding in Atlanta. And then obviously the damage that you guys see there being on either in the line uh, of the eye of the hurricane or on the east or dirty right side, the dirty side of the storm. So it's going to be a, a monumental task recovering from this. Can you walk us through, Governor Kemp, what happens when there's an emergency declaration from your office? Is it a matter of, as you mentioned, getting the manpower to the hard hit areas and helping folks rebuild? What's the state's role? Yeah, really, the um, emergency um, state of emergency that that I put in place several days before the sh storm really allowed us to open the state operations center, have every state agency, our federal partners uh, in one location where we can communicate with the locals and our private sector partners like our power companies. It allows us to start moving uh, assets ahead of the storm, allows us to go ahead and call up the Georgia National Guard uh, and have their teams in place and be ready to respond. And literally, as soon as the storm started passing and the winds died down enough for us to work safely, we had people coming in right behind the storm. Uh, and we did that all the way over to the South Carolina line where you guys are. But this storm, Brad, is so big and so widespread. I mean, this was a four or 500 mile wide storm, one of the biggest storms ever to come out of the Atlantic and it was very devastating and it hit and affected a lot of counties, really every county in our state. And so even though we got every resource we're throwing at it, it is just a, a lot to do. I'll give you a good example. The Cockwood EMC guy down there in Valdosta today said in Hurricane Idalia, which was really bad, they had uh, 500 power poles that snapped in half. They have a thousand right now. Oh my goodness. Uh, so we're just dealing with with a, a, a lot of things that we got to do to get power back on. And I know the people in the CSRA are dealing with that. And I just want people to know that we know that and we are responding. We have emergency generators on the way to your area right now so we can get convenience stores some power where they can pump fuel. Uh, we've got a uh, hundred and fifty Georgia National Guard there right now. Um, Five, four heavy route teams, which is helping clear roadways to get power trucks in and be able to move emergency emergency vehicles around. And then we have 16 chainsaw teams there. So even if people aren't seeing us in their neighborhood, just know that we're there and we're working that way. Governor, what sort of advice or guidance can you give us when it comes to grocery stores? There are long lines at just about every grocery store, those that are open that have power. Any advice for folks before they try to go into a store? And, and then when they do, the shelves are mostly empty. Well, this is why, you know, when we put the uh, state of emergency out and called the National Guard up, you know, we were telling people, look, you need to have 72 hours worth of supplies to bide your time because it is going to take us literally that long to be able to cut our way in uh, to certain neighborhoods to, to be able to get 
power trucks in to start restoring power. So I would tell people at this point, um, you know, you're just going to have to be patient, uh, try to survive on what you have at the house. Uh, I think if there's emergencies, certainly try to call 911. Uh, if there's other things, I would reach out to your local emergency management agency. It is best to go there because then they can filter things to the Georgia Emergency Management Agency through the Web EOC, which helps us organize and, and really be more efficient at how we respond. We had some mixed messages coming out of the area this morning with things dealing with law enforcement and stories of not having water and nobody can pump fuel. And uh, so we're, we've are we got an incident response team that GEMA is sending down there to try to get some organization around all of that so that we have really uh, a central team that is focused on the, the response instead of a lot of mixed messages. And these things are not uncommon in a storm because there's a lot of chaos. There's you know, I'm sure we, I know Verizon has over 400 towers that are out right now. So communications are spotty uh, across the state, but just know that we're, we're on top of things and we're responding just as quickly as we can. The other thing is I would tell people, be very careful. We had a National Guard soldier that got uh, shot today. Thankfully, that soldier's going to be all right. But there, I mean, he touched a guardrail. Somehow that guardrail was electrified. Uh, and it sent that individual to the hospital. So if people don't have to get out and they can give us another day or two to make sure we got the roads clear and start getting some power back up and we have safe conditions out there, that would be helpful too. Governor, I saw something from Georgia Power right before we started this interview, and I don't want to put you in a position of having to speak for Georgia Power, but the estimation for the electricity to be fully restored in Augusta was a long time from now. I think the email said October 12th. Can it possibly take that long? I know we're supposed to be patient, but that seems like a long time. Well, Brad, we have, you know, like 14,000 people that are responding just from the power company side of things. But this is a statewide event. This is a storm like no other. We got transmission lines that were actually damaged. So until you can fix these big towers and big lines, um, get the lines, you know, on the routes going to neighborhoods. Uh, the, the individual with Cockwood EMC today, like I said, they got twice as many poles broken in this storm as they had in Hurricane Idalia, which was a, a massive storm down there. And they're basically saying the same thing. So, you know, I wouldn't want to speculate on how long it's going to take for anything, but just know that we're dealing with this and, and really, you know, 30, at least 30 counties that have just dramatic damage like you have in Richmond and Columbia County, and I'm sure uh, McDuffie and others around. Uh, but we're also dealing with, take for instance, the city of Atlanta. I mean, we had a storm before the storm, the record rainfall in the city of Atlanta and the metro Atlanta area prior to this storm was nine inches in a 48 hour period. We had 11 inches of rain in a 40 hour period, breaking the record by almost two inches of rain. We're dealing wow. with mudslides and, and other things up in the northern part of the state. So uh, this is a statewide event. You know, most hurricanes we get, they're limited uh, to, a, to a lot smaller area. But you just take the South Carol state of South Carolina. I mean, we have a million or, or we have about a million people without power, a million customers without power right now in the state. South Carolina, I know yesterday had 1.4 million. You got the state of North Carolina plus the state of Florida that, you know, has either millions or at least hundreds of thousands. So you got every state just about around us that's dealing with the same issue. Uh, so it's just going to take some time. We'll work as fast as we can. They're working 16 hour days and uh, we're trying to help them all we can clearing the right of ways and roads with National Guard, we got Georgia Forestry Chainsaw Teams, DNR Chainsaw Teams, Department of Transportation. Uh, but it, it is just the, the, the cost of this storm and the damage is going to be much more than Hurricane Michael. That was a, you know, a Cat 5 hurricane that came up through southwest Georgia uh, back in 2019, first part of 2020. Governor Kemp, just a few more questions. What about insurance companies? Any advice from a state perspective when it comes to calling our agents and starting to file those claims? 
Well, I know uh, the insurance commissioner, John King, was with us today at the press conference. So if you if anybody has the ability, you can go back and watch his comments. But certainly they have information on their website. I think the biggest thing for people uh, is to document, you know, take pictures, take videos of damage that you have. Uh, his advice earlier today was don't do don't go ahead and trade for major repairs. There's a lot of fraudsters and scamsters that are out there, um, you know, do enough to secure your home and weatherproof your home, uh, but wait and, and try to talk to your insurance company before doing major repairs to make sure that you're just dealing um, with, you know, high integrity companies, try to deal uh, local, get two or three estimates. Um, don't sign the first contract that gets to you uh, because usually those are the people that are looking to take advantage of folks. Well, that's really good advice. Two more quick questions. One is, it, it's hot off the presses, if you will. Uh, we had a news conference a few moments ago in Augusta, and the mayor and the fire chief spoke, and they said that Payne College here in Augusta is really hit hard when it comes to food and water, and they said they were waiting for the state to release resources so that Payne College can have food and water. Any idea when those resources will be released or was that part of that overall relief effort that you mentioned earlier? Well, Brad, I've been texting with the mayor all day. He hasn't said anything about paying college or uh, water or food for them okay. in, in any of the texts that I've had. Um, those are the kind of things that need to be going through the local emergency management agency that would go into the web EOC and we can respond to those things um, you know, I don't know where that's coming from for people, you know, to expect that we can move food and water to venues when we literally have roads that we cannot cross right now um, is just, just, you know, really hard to understand. Well, um, yeah, but, I, but I can just tell well, you, uh, we have got a lot of resources that are in Augusta right now. I mean, that's what the Georgia National Guard is doing. They're trying to clear roads. They're moving supplies like water um and 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 other things but i mean you got to remember we're, we're less than you know two days from this storm hitting uh so we have a lot of work to do just to even clear roads where people could get food and water in there so you know that's why we again you know we're messaging before the storm you really need to be prepared to have a couple of days worth of supplies until we can get in uh, clear the roads and get to people. But but again, I had no knowledge of that until you just mentioned that. No, I appreciate it too. And I just jotted it down and thought I would run it by you. And and, and you're right. It is early. It is for, for folks who watch this interview later. This is Saturday, day two. And my last question well, to you. I, I can just tell you, Brad, right now, uh, you know, I, just before I got on the interview, I, I asked Director Sawlings to call the mayor because we're getting so many mixed messages out of Augusta. Mm -hmm. uh, so I know he's speaking with him directly about the resources that are needed. And also, you know, the local resources that uh, Augusta Richmond County has that they could also be deploying as well. OK, that's good information. Just one more question for you, Governor Kemp. And it just kind of from a personal standpoint, you're right, you did get ahead of this storm and you did warn Georgians to be ready and, and you deserve full credit for that. But just personally, are you surprised at the magnitude of this storm? Because I think I speak for a lot of people in the Augusta area, we didn't think it was gonna be this bad and it is horrible. Did you know it would be this level? We knew it was gonna be bad. Yeah. I mean, we knew it was a very wide storm. Uh, that's why we did a statewide state of emergency. You know, we didn't do it just for counties south of Macon or, you know, uh, uh, on a line from Valdosta to Augusta. We literally knew we were going to have a statewide event. That was what we were messaging uh, prior to the storm getting here. But, you know, it's just like when we had Hurricane Debbie that hit Florida and ended up being a tro tropical storm a couple of months ago. That, that came through Valdosta as well and some of the other counties surrounding the Valdosta area in South Georgia. You know, people in the northern part of the state didn't even know we were having a storm. It mm. was it was calm. It was sunny. It was pretty. And we, we literally had in, just incredible flooding over in the Savannah area, Effingham County. But really, pe people north of Macon didn't even realize we'd had that kind of storm. So I can see where, you know, people don't really understand how how powerful storms are at times but 
Uh, we, we knew this was going to be a, a statewide event, and that's why we were messaging that. But, you know, Brad, at this point, that, all that doesn't matter. We, we just got to help people. We're throwing everything we got at this. We're going to be there to help the people in uh, R- Richmond and, and the, the Richmond County and the city of Augusta and the rest of the CSRA. And, um, you know, I just ask people to be patient with us. We got a lot of resources there, and we'll have more coming. Well, on behalf of everybody in this part of the state, Governor, I cannot thank you enough for those resources and for that assistance. Thanks for helping us recover, and thanks for taking time to be with us today. We appreciate you. Glad to do it. Y'all stay safe. God bless. Thanks so much. Georgia Governor Brian Kemp.